Matthew chapter 25. If someone beside you does not have a Bible, maybe you can share your copy of God's Word with them uh, that we can see this scripture together today. Matthew chapter 25 and verse 41. No more sobering words ever fell from the lips of a human being than the scripture that I'm getting ready to read this morning. Matthew 25 and verse 41. You don't know why we're serious about church and serious about serving God and serious about our call, my call into the ministry. It's because of this one of verses like this. Look at Matthew 25, verse 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. I want to preach this morning on the subject, why there's a hell. It's the most controversial subject in the entire world. Is the thought of eternal banishment from God and eternal punishment in hell fire. They asked a chaplain one time in the Navy or somebody came in one day and he came in to preach. And the men asked him, they said, Chaplain, do you believe in hell? And he said, no, no I don't. Don't believe there is such a place. I'm a, I'm a liberal minded preacher and we don't believe that way anymore. And they said, well, if there is no hell, we don't need you. And if there is a hell, we don't want you. Every preacher in this world today will have to be faced with that question. The doctrine of hell is incompatible, that's what they say now, with the love of God and the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. The problem is the doctrine of hell is a teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ preached on hell fire. There's no avoiding it. There is no getting out of it. Jesus Christ mentioned hell fire and Mitch preached it eight times recorded in the Bible. You know how long his ministry was? Three, a little over three years, three and a half. That means almost at least twice per year the Lord Jesus Christ gave a, a dissertation or a message about hell. Now, we're living in a time when more and more preachers are not preaching about hell. If a preacher does not preach about hell, it's for one of two reasons. He either don't believe it's real, or else he knows it'll offend people and you can't get a big crowd and their money that way. One of them two reasons. You cannot be a preacher of the Bible and not preach about hell. It's impossible. It cannot be done. One man said, well, I'm not called to do that. Well, you're not called to preach then. If you're called to preach... You're called to preach the Bible. I don't enjoy it. I don't like it. I wish, I wish it wasn't there. As a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul said in Acts chapter 20, he said, I cease not to warn everyone day and night with tears. We ought to be able to preach on hell with a tear in our eye. You don't want to hear a preacher preach on hell like he's glad people are going. I'm not glad nobody's going. But the odds are this morning there's people sitting in here today that's going to wind up burning in hell forever and ever and ever. I don't like to think about that. My heart is broke for you this morning if you're not really saved. What kind of a preacher don't preach on hell? One preacher said, well, we just love Jesus and we follow the teachings of Jesus. He's the one who taught hell fire. Jesus Christ coined the phrase hell fire. There is no such thing as a preacher following Jesus Christ who does not preach on hell fire. There is no such thing. That would be a good question to ask all the preachers in this town and community and country. I'm not mad at them. I just want to say if they're going to preach the Bible, they have to preach on hell. They have to. You can't get out of it. You're not going to win a popularity contest doing that. I'm not in one. My job is to preach the Bible. 
And one thing you're going to get when you come to this church, you're going to get the Bible. It may hire lip your grandma, but you're going to get the Bible when you walk in these doors right here. My grandma may not like it. I may not like it. But we're called to preach the Bible. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm going to preach on why there is a hell. You know, an atheist don't believe in God for the same reason we do. You know, ask an atheist, why don't you believe in God? And they'll say, because if there was a God, he wouldn't have made a mess like this with all the suffering and mess we got in the world. And that's really a logical argument. But now we do believe in God for the very same reason. We do believe God made it, but he didn't make it like this. There's sin, and now it's under a curse, and that explains why there's a mess. God didn't want it. God didn't create it like this. Man sinned. God, and that's the only real explanation for the whole world and people even being here. And air and thoughts and musical notes and everything. It couldn't have evolved. There's got to be a God, y'all. There's got to be. It couldn't have just popped out of nowhere. And if there's a God, he made it right. And sin caused it to get messed up. And then God says, I'll take responsibility. Sends his son down and dies on the cross to absolve us from sin to get us out of here. That's why the world's in the mess it's in. Ladies and gentlemen, I preach to you this morning from a broken heart. I preach to you this morning that Jesus Christ said over eight, at least eight times in the Bible, mention hell fire. Several things. Number one, why God created hell. The verse I just read to you, why God created hell. Now, the Bible said hell was not made for us. Hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. God, knowing the devil would never, could never repent, could never get right, made hell so that the devil and his angels that he took with him when he fell will wind up in this place. Hell was not made for you and me. If you go, you'll go as an intruder. You'll go to a place that wasn't prepared for you to start with. You'll walk over the blood of Jesus Christ and spit in the face of God and walk by the cross and drop in hell. That's what will happen to you. God never made hell for them. I heard a man say one time, he said, well, if hell's real, how come the, the New Testament writers don't mention it? They do. Every single New Testament writer mentioned hell. You say, uh, 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 no, they didn't. Paul didn't. Well, let me tell you what Paul said. Uh, Paul himself said over in the book of 2 Thessalonians, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them, uh, that, that no, not God, the Lord coming back. When the Lord comes back, Paul himself talked about in flaming fire. Now, the Bible does talk about it. The Bible does talk about it. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 8 and 9, the apostle Paul said, flaming fire. Peter, in 2 Peter 2, 4, said he cast not the angels at sin, but cast them down to hell. James, in James chapter 3 and verse 6, said the tongue is set on fire of hell. Uh, uh, the beloved apostle John. Somebody said, well, John, the beloved John, he just wrote John the love book and John 3, 16, and he didn't tell, oh, yes, he did. He wrote the book of Revelation too. And the book of Revelation, John said, whosoever was not found written in the book of life would be cast into the lake of fire. Jude, in the book of uh, Jude, chapter 1 and verse 7, said that the inhabitants of Sodom and Gomorrah are present tense, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Ladies and gentlemen, hey, you ask us why we run buses? Because there's a hell. You ask us why we support missionaries? There's a hell. You ask us why we, why we fast and we preach hard? There's a hell where people go and burn forever and ever and ever according to this book. You say, I don't believe it. You don't believe the Bible. You're taking a chance nobody in Las Vegas would take. You've never been dead, and you don't know nobody who has been dead. The only other person who has an authority on it who has been dead and come back is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he told us that it's there. Jesus informed it. He said, how can you escape the damnation of hell? Mark 9, 47, you'd be better off to go to hell with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Matthew 23 and verse 33. 
Uh, how can you escape? Luke 16 and verse 23. The Bible said the rich man lift up his eyes in hell. The Jehovah's false witnesses say that's a parable. Jesus never used personal names in a parable. There was a certain rich man, Lazarus, named him, named him, and a, a beggar, uh, or the, the rich man, and then the beggar named Lazarus, I'm sorry, and the be- rich man uh, was rich, and Lazarus fed, uh, eat the crumbs that fell out from under his table. Ladies and gentlemen, it was no parable. He said the field is the world. This is that. The seed is the word of God. And he explains what everything is, but when he gets to the fire, he don't say the fire represents something. He said the seed is the word. The world, the field is the world. When he gets to the fire, he don't say nothing. You know why? Because the fire is fire. Jesus affirmed it. Jesus Christ said there is a hell. There is no doubt about it. Matthew 16, verse 18, the Lord said, On this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Matthew 5 and verse 29 said, uh, Fear them which have not killed the body, but after that have no more they can do, but fear him which can destroy both soul and body in hell. Hell is not the grave. Hell is not the grave. Are you listening to me? One man said, well, hell's just a grave. And they, they think they're smart because they went back in the Old Testament and found Gehenna and Sheol and Tartarus and Hades. And they get all confused. They don't even know the English. They sure don't need to be trying to study Hebrew and Greek. And the Hebrew teaches there's a hell. The Greek teaches there's a hell. And the English teaches there's a hell. The Bible teaches there's a hell. It is not the grave. See, the Lord said, fear not. Don't be afraid of somebody that can just kill your body and can't do nothing else to you. All they can do is kill you. But rather, you better be afraid of that one which after he's killed to cast you into hell. Now, it don't mean the grave. That would be like saying, that would be like me getting up here saying, now look, y'all, don't, don't you kill, don't you worry about somebody can, uh, can just kill you. Don't, don't be scared of them. You some Paul bears you better watch out for. That's who you better be scared of because they can take you and put you in the grave. If, if hell is not the grave. He ain't talking about no Paul bears. He's talking about God, which after you're dead, cast you into hell. Let me say secondly this morning, who will go to hell and why? Who will go to hell and why? The rich man died, the Bible said in Luke 16. He's in hell. He's in hell this morning. He was in hell when Columbus discovered America. He was in hell when they built the White House for our presidents to live in. In the days of George Washington, that rich man was still in hell. 2,000 years, he's still there this morning. Who will go to hell and why? Well, all who reject God's Son and the free gift of eternal life. The Bible said the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Are you going to take a chance? Are you going to, are you going to, one man said, uh, he said, uh, that's not right. I, I've heard, I heard a lot of people say this. They'll say that's not right. The punishment don't fit the crime. You know, if you do a crime down here and you get caught, they take you to court and they take, send you up there in front of the judge and then the judge sends you to so many years or so many months uh, depending on how much money you got and how good a lawyer you got. And, and, they, and they, they send it to you, and they'll say the punishment should fit the crime. Man said there, there's no way people burn in hell forever because the punishment don't fit the crime. No matter how bad you are, you don't deserve the... And see, the, the Bible said God's ways are not our ways. Neither are our thoughts his thoughts. You're forgetting something. You're forgetting something. Uh, when you sin against God... You are sinning against an eternal being that will never, ever, ever die and an eternal sin on your record. The blood of Jesus Christ is the only thing that can get that off your record. Suffering don't get that off. No matter how long you suffer, that record, if the blood don't, it never gets paid for. That's why you stay in hell forever. You don't ever get it paid. The debt is never paid. I tell you what, I tell you what, I'm glad I'm not going to hell, y'all. I'm so glad, I'm so thankful that the Lord saved me. Glory to God, I don't have to go. And you don't have to go. He loved you. People say, well, God, that's incompatible with the love of God. Hold on, hold on just a second. If he loves that much, he hates that much. If he loves righteousness, he hates wickedness. We, we're not capable of, of hating sin like God hates it. We can't see it through his eyes. Listen, if there were not a hell, God's son would have never had to die on that cross. Hey! Hey, let's get in the bus ministry. Let's reach some people. Let's give out some tracks. Let's honor God so they won't have to go to hell.
hell when they die. Listen, people may go to hell from this area, but it shouldn't be shining like Baptist Church's fault. Their blood shouldn't be on our hands, bus workers. Their blood shouldn't be on our hands, Sunday school teachers. Their blood shouldn't be on our hands. Tell your neighbors. Tell your friends. Give out some tracts. Get in the bus ministry. People's going to hell without God. Number three, the torments of hell. One man said, now you're not, you're going to run people off. I, uh, listen, the what kind of preacher would I be or person if I saw your child and there's a rattlesnake called up right here, reared back to strike, and I saw your child just playing around over here, and I said, well, I don't, I don't want them to feel judged. I think people should make their own decisions whether they want to stay around rattlesnakes or not. I want them to like me. That's a sorry bunch of preachers we got in the pulpit today. They won't come back if I warn them about that snake. Money, 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 money is what's driving an outfit like that. The Tommy, what if I saw you getting ready to run out in front of an 18 wheeler truck down? You know what I'd say? Whoa, stop! No, don't do it! If I'm half a man, that's what I'd do. We're guilty of being a criminal if we refuse to tell people there's a hell. You say, well, you can't win people like it. Our job is to tell them the truth. Amen. You'll never win nobody saying, well, well, come to our church. We'll make you feel good. Did you know the goal of most preachers nowadays is to make people leave church feeling good about themselves? Do you understand that you don't always leave church feeling good about yourself? You ought to walk out of here sometimes saying, Lord, in mercy, God, have mercy on me. Uh, help me to do. You ought to. We all need to. Amen. Once in a while, we ought to leave thinking we ain't fit to shoot. We ought to do better. Now, listen, brother. I'm here to tell you there's a hell. There's torments in hell. If you're saved, you ought to shout every day of your life. Thank God you ain't going to burn. Everything else might be bad. Things might be bad at the house. Your marriage might have blowed up. You may have cancer. I don't know, but at least you're not going to hell. You're not going to hell. You can shout every day of your life. There's a boy up in Canada worked on these oil rigs. And there was 12 men working on an oil rig in Canada and there was an explosion. And it blew that chemical all over them and everybody got on fire. Three of them burned to death. And this one survived. And he went to church one night and heard a preacher preach like I'm preaching to you this morning. And that boy wore a body suit. He wore a body suit. That means all the flesh he had was hands and his face. His nose was burned off. And he, just, he kept himself completely covered because he wasn't nothing but, but scars. That's for people. That's for you people that are you pacifist who says God wouldn't let nobody burn. These people burning right now. Down here at the hospital in Winston-Salem. These people got burned in car wrecks last night. This boy said, preacher, I believe in hell. He said they couldn't get it out. He said they gave me morphine. They put every drug known to man in my body. He said I was in hell for three months. I felt the flame. I felt the fire. He said, God wouldn't let nobody burn. He let that guy, he let him burn three months. Well, I just don't believe in a God like that. Well, suit yourself. Now, you know where that's going to get you? You think that's going to change anything? You think he's going to change his mind because you don't think it's fair? Who are you to decide what sinners get and what they don't? Who are you to make the rules of the universe? Where were you when God laid the foundation of the earth and made the sun, the moon, the stars, and created hell? I don't know about you, buddy. I know when I'm beat. I'll just take whatever he says. I'll say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You make the rules. You write it. I'll preach it. He said, what if it ain't right? Well, it ain't going to be my fault. If you change it, it'll be your fault. If it's wrong, we preach it. It ain't our fault. Thank God, I'm glad I know I'm not going to hell. They took people 
this happens. You know what's wrong? You know what's wrong with y'all? We're a bunch of spoiled American brats. We think the air condition tires up. We shouldn't go to church. We, Lord in mercy, one kid can have a, a, a snotty nose and the whole family stays home. That's Americans. You know what they do in other countries? They take them boys out there and put bird cages on their head and tie their hands and fill, put rats in the bird cage and leave them out there in the jungle. The rats eat their face. They last two or three days screaming. That's happened, folks. That's fact. You say, God wouldn't allow suffering. He does. Because of sin. Rats eat their nose. They're out, they finally die screaming. It's screaming. You ever heard a grown man scream? You know what they do to them? They hang them upside down, beat their feet with clubs, take a pistol and shoot them right here in the intestines and walk off and leave them hanging there. I talked to a man yesterday in Hickory when he was on bus route. I said I talked to a man yesterday when we was on bus route. We ain't perfect, but brother, we're trying to reach some people. And he was over here on one of them little things where a bus picks you up, a little, little shed-like, and he was sitting there, and I walked over to him and gave him one of our little flyers, and I said, how you doing, sir? And he began, and he just poured it out. He said, I was in Vietnam. I said, I'm, I'm a preacher, and I'm, I want to invite you to church. And he said, well, I'm Catholic. I said, were you a saved Catholic or a lost Catholic? You know, you know what I mean? Being a Catholic don't mean squat or Baptist either. Don't mean squat. There's a lot of Baptists went to hell. And he started pouring it out. He said, I was in Vietnam. He said, a lot of my friends told me I couldn't be saved. God, God would never forgive me because we killed people in Vietnam. He said, I was trying to protect my country. He said, it's kill or be killed. And I said, you're absolutely right, sir. The Bi you're absolutely right. You do have a right to defend your family, your country. And when you kill in line of duty, you're not a murderer. If you go out here and just murder somebody, that's what the Lord meant when he said, thou shalt not kill. And we got on that for a minute. And he said, I've seen them. And I could see the hurt coming out of that guy's eyes. He's about 70 years old. He said, I seen them, preacher. He said, I seen them, uh, old, old people, and get them out of their, uh, out and make them crawl out through the jungle and take a 45 and put it right there behind their head, blow their brains out. He said, I seen them, preacher. They took babies, little toddlers out there crawling around, and he said, they'd pour gasoline on them and just set them on fire and watch them burn. Babies. I said, you seen that? And he said, Yeah. And I'm telling you, by the time I got through talking to that guy, I, by the time I got through talking to that guy, when I listen, Dollywood, Disney World, and Carowind all together couldn't have made me no more happy than I was walking back to my car saying, thank God I'm saved, thank God I'm saved, thank God I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved. There ain't nothing like being saved. There's nothing in the world like church and God when it's real and you really believe it. Nothing in this world can satisfy your soul. Nothing can do for you. Not a steak that thick. You could only eat so much of it. But thank God when he's down in your soul and you have peace when you lay down at night and you know your name's up there in heaven. Glory to God, people. It don't get no better than that. You say, what if there ain't one? What if there is? I can use the same argument against you, you know. And I've got more proof they are than you got they ain't. You know science has proved what the Bible says about hell? Give them a little credit once in a while they get one right. They'll tell you the center of this earth is on fire. They'll tell you that. It's proven fact that what the Bible said about the present hell. I heard a preacher. He said, I just don't believe hell's in the center of the earth because we're going to be, God's going to make a new earth and everything, and I just can't believe we'd be happy living on a new earth thinking hell's in the middle of it. Hell ain't going to be in the middle of the new earth, you nut. Death and hell will be cast into the lake of fire, and it'll be gone somewhere, and the new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness won't have... People, people spend all their time watching specials or watching something on the History Channel about hell when they ought to get in the Bible and find out what the authorities said about it. The world believes in it. They tell people, oh, I'll go to hell. What the hell? 
Who the hell? All day long. So you hear, some of you hear it all day long. You know why that's conditioning your mind to make you think it don't exist. It's real. Man, the preacher come out one day. This big old guy come out back when they put gas in the car, a little preacher about that high. And that guy come out, he said, man, it's hot as hell out here today. And that preacher got out and held his hand. He said, I just want to say I'm so glad to meet you. It's so unusual to meet somebody that believes in hell. Like I said, what are you talking about, man? And he wouldn't let go of his hand. He just held on to it. And, just, and the guy was trying to jerk away. Jerk away. Are you crazy or something? He said, and, it, and really, a lot of people don't believe it's hot like you just said it is. Man, he, that guy was in a mess. You talk about sweating. Brother, the world makes a joke out of it. It ain't no joke. It ain't no joke. Why do you think the devil takes Bible words like that and tries to make them cuss words? Hell ain't a cuss word. It's a place. You can use it in the wrong way and make it bad language. Like damn, in other words. I'm telling you this morning, ladies and gentlemen. People, let me just say this. Everybody look at me. Let's get, be real here just a second. If what I'm telling you this morning is really true, and I say that, believing it in my heart, I say if to give you a, a, a chance to debate it in your head. If what I'm telling you this morning is really true, nothing else really matters. Nothing else really matters. Except you say, you can live in the nicest house, have, have 10,000 pleasure, drugs in it, and you'll live that long. And then you'll live forever and ever and ever and ever and ever somewhere. That's 80 years. That's forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And ever. That's 100 years, and it's going to be gone. You're going to be dead, y'all. We're all going to be dead. We're not going to be here long. One of these days you're going to say, I remember old Danny used to preach. Up. I'll be saying, where's old so-and-so? I don't know. Really, we're just passing through. We're not here long. They ain't nothing else really matters than getting somebody saved. We need some soul winners around this church. Some of y'all's a backslid. You, you ain't doing, I, I'll get in. We're going to talk about some other stuff tonight. We need some people who have a burden for some sinners. You say, I want the church to grow. I don't want to steal people, other church members. We need to get sinners. That's what got me. Rock music and blue lights flashing and smoke coming out of the altar didn't phase me. I already had that. We had a band. Number four, how long will hell last? This present hell will last to the end of the millennium, which is at least 1,007 years from right now. When people die right now, their soul goes immediately to hell if they're not saved. Paradise was moved when Christ died, arose again, and paradise is now in the presence of God. If you die and you're, you're saved, your soul goes to God, your body goes to holy ground, and your spirit returns to God who gave it. If you're not saved and you die, your soul goes to hell. It wasn't ever moved. Still down there. Your soul goes to hell, your body goes to holy ground, and your spirit returns to God who gave it. Ladies and gentlemen, how long will that hell last? To the end of the millennium at the great white throne judgment. Number five, what will happen at the close of the present hell? The Bible said, death and hell deliver up the dead which were in them. All the people that have died all throughout eternity from way on back whose souls are in hell, it, it's just like right now. I don't know why you'd have a problem with that. It's just like right now if you go out here and commit a crime, you know what they're going to do? They come out and arrest you. You don't go to the penitentiary right then. Where you go? The jail. You go to jail. Some of you nodding your head. I, you've been... <laughs> We got a bunch of them around here, let me tell you. Uh, I wouldn't try nothing if I was you. We got some rednecks can take care of you. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, if, if you've ever been to, at the court, they, 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 you, go to, you go to jail. You don't go to court. They say, well, you can't go to hell till you're judged. That's, that's wrong. You're judged when you leave here. You're already judged. You're judged the second you die. Before you die, you're already judged. So when you die... You go to hell, right? Then judgment day at the end of the millennium, 
God's going to say, bring them in here, and they go in there and they get you out of your jail cell and they bring you before the judge. He hears your case, and then they take you and put you in a penitentiary. That's the lake of fire. This present hell will one day be cast into the lake of fire. You say, I do not believe it. Now what you're saying is, the whole Bible is wrong. One man said, I believe in heaven, but not in hell. The same Bible. One man said, well, hell is symbolic. Is heaven symbolic? You say, hell don't really mean hell. Heaven really mean heaven? Now, I'm telling you, you can't have it both ways. You either believe it or you don't believe it. You say, okay, I don't believe it. What? See where that gets you. See where that gets you. You either believe it or you don't believe it. If it's true, nothing else matters. If it's not true, there ain't no truth. Everybody's guess as good as anybody else why we're here. Now listen, you can go to college six years and ain't going to hear nothing like what you're hearing right here this morning. You can watch TV preachers, you're blue in the face and never get what you're getting here this morning. You know what you're getting? Bible preaching and God's spirit with common sense. Number six, the lake of fire is a place of no return. Revelation 14, 11. The smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. You say, well, God wouldn't let them do millions and millions and millions of years. What do you preach? Hold it. There ain't no millions and millions of years. You, you, there ain't going to be no time. It's always now. See, when, when the Lord said time shall be no more, you know he created time. There wasn't, didn't used to be no such thing as time. God was in eternity. Then he made time. Now, you can't, we can't understand that. Ask the Lord to give you, to open your head, brain. There wasn't no time. You know how dumb evolution is? It believes time evolved. That'll cook your brain, brother, if you think about that for about an hour. Time evolved. They also believe that darkness and light evolved, and it just so happens you need to sleep about eight hours every night. That's all accident, if you believe what they teach at college. You just happen to need eight hours of sleep at night, and it just happens to get dark that long. You better, you better watch. Before you go out here and say, I don't believe the Bible. You better watch talking like that. You know what you're doing? You're looking for an excuse to sin. That's what you're looking for. When people reject the Bible, they have a moral reason. They want to live like the devil and don't want to have to answer to God. How long... Place a lake of fire is no return if a bird flew the ocean. You both, you've been to the coast, right? You Christians go to the coast. And went to the coast. You ever seen the sand down there, man? Whew. Now, and, and like a place like Myrtle Beach, it just rocks. That ain't really sand. It's just a bunch of gray gravel. And people think that's to be. Go down, go down to Destin, Florida. Pensacola, Fort Walton, brother, that sand's like, it's like flour and it's white as sugar. You can hold a million of them in your hand. And one grain of sand and turn and flew to the moon and dropped it. And flew back down here and got one more grain and flew to the moon and dropped it. And moved every grain of sand on the coast of the United States. You have no less time to stay in the lake of fire. I was ironing shirt this morning and I put my hand, see if I, I felt that heat. Go on, turn that stove on. Let the thing get orange right. Let's see who in here can hold your hand on there. You can't do it. The bravest man in the country can't do it. He said, I don't believe it. Well, you're going to find out one day. You'll find out. You willing to take that chance? Number seven, I'm through. How not to go to hell. How not to go to hell. You know how you not to go to hell? Turn to Jesus Christ with all of your heart 
here today. Not tomorrow, not next week. Don't you wait. Don't say, well, I need to talk to my boyfriend. I need to talk to my, my body. I, I need to get some things in order. Do it today. You don't know. There have been a lot of people left church lost and died without God and, and went to hell. Lots of them. Millions of them. Millions of people in Ch- Cambodia and China and Vietnam and Guam and Japan and, and all those in Africa and South America. And North, if, if you had to go to hell, you'd be worse to go to hell from America than anywhere. Sodom didn't even have a Bible, people. Sodom didn't have churches on every corner. Radio programs preaching the Bible. How not to go to hell. Repent and turn to Jesus Christ. By repent, I mean just turn to Jesus. Repentance don't save you. Calling on the Lord don't save you. You know what saves you? Receiving what Christ done for you on the cross. Watch. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God. If I have a gift, I'm going to give Jeremy. All he has to do is receive it. I tell you, he don't say, well, but do I need to do this? No, no, I'm going to give it to you. It's a gift. That's what salvation is. That's what salvation is. Why don't you get saved this morning? Why don't you walk out of your seat and get down here and get saved today, not next week. You say, I'll think about it and I'll come back trick of the devil, you may be dead for, for next time we have church. The preacher went to see this guy in the hospital and this guy, elderly gentleman, he went there and he said, Mr. So-and-so, are you saved? And he held up a big Masonic ring like that and he said, that's all the religion I need right there. And the preacher said, but wait a minute, are you saved? He said, I told you, preacher, that's all the religion I need right there. He said, but have you been saved? He said, I don't have to worry about it. I got my religion right there. And he left. Several days went by. They called for the preacher. They said, that man wants to talk to you. He walked back in that room. There laid that man breathing his last breath. And he began to scream. He said, help me. Help me, he said. And the preacher was saying, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, God, God, get my feet out of this fire. God, I'm burning. God, I'm burning. God, get me out. And died like that. He went out. He's gone. Say to get saved. I don't know if he did or not. I hope he did. I hope he did. But there's people die like that every day. There's somebody going to die in this town today and die without God. Why there's a hell? God made it for the devil and his angels. You say, well, it's God's fault. Uh uh-uh, uh, not so fast. He let his son come down here and die so that nobody had to go. But it's your choice. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Nobody's talking, nobody's moving. Do not talk. Bow your head, please. You might, you might disturb somebody that God's dealing with. Do not move. God, speak to your heart right now. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed right now. Right now, ask yourself this question. Am I saved? You say, preacher, I, I don't want my kids to... They, they need to be. They need to get it settled. Your kids need to get it settled. They need to. You say, I don't think kids ought to hear that. Is it true? If it's true, they need to hear it. If it's not true, what are we doing in church? We're crazy being in here this morning. You you ain't got no third choice, man. It's either true or it ain't. And it is. Let's do everything we can to keep somebody out of hell. Maybe there's somebody here saying, you know what, preacher? I'm 